Hey everybody! Today is Tuesday, which means <laughs> there was a there was a financial call, an investors call. Is that what it basically is? Quarter three earnings and sales uh, call. We have recorded this on Saturday, the sixth of February, so uh, we can't really address any information that might have been brought up in that earnings report. So if we know exactly what's happening with Assassin's Creed next, and all of this episode is rendered outdated information. Uh, we apologize, but we hope you can enjoy it anyway. <laughs> the standard document book page has two parts. The hook and the blade. What's up, everybody? I'm the hook. And I'm the blade. And I'm the cheesy writing. <laughs> <laughs> and together we're, you know. Welcome to the Endblade Stavcast, a show about all things Assassin's Creed. I'm your host, Lawson. With me, as always, is your other host, Tim. And, of course, we are joined this week by the illustrious Endstav13, also known as Noah. How's it going? Noah, who should win, Godzilla or Kong? <laughs> um, you know, Godzilla has a pretty awesome uh, face laser, so I'm going to have to go with that. But Kong, he monkey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but monkey alone weak, monkey together strong. <laughs> you know, I, I was thinking about the, the issue with these, like, versus movies. Is, is It's not like someone is just opening up a computer and, like, simulating these things. Like there's there's all there's all kinds of like conditions and intentions around it. So whoever ends up winning, someone's gonna have an issue with it. And that someone is gonna be me. <laughs> and then then the movie becomes Godzilla and Kong versus Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Which I would watch the shit out of personally. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Especially if Tim is scaled up the way Kong was. <laughs> <laughs> just big big old tim <laughs> and and like godzilla roars and tim just goes i'm really mad <laughs> <laughs> no, no 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 i go i'm the blade <laughs> <laughs> so noah we're here to talk about we have some as we as we mentioned last episode it has been uh Leak City, uh, everyone and their mother is trying to <laughs> predict what the next Assassin's Creed game is going to be. Yeah, and you know, what's really weird about this year is it's the first time in like seven or eight years that there's a really wide collection of leaks. Because usually it's really centralized, like, oh, it's going to be Egypt, yeah. it's going to be London. Like this time, nope, it, India, Japan. France, you know, <laughs> it's going to be Morocco, yeah. <laughs> Persia. <laughs> Usually like by this time in the year, someone at Kotaku has already told us at least the country that we're right. going to be in. And then from there, we can really narrow it down. Like we, we figured we knew it was Vikings a good year or so before any details started to come out about Valhalla. Well, well, well that was because of the division two Easter egg, right? Yeah, that was, I think, uh, April of 2019. There's actually a leak prior to that uh, from oh, okay. Fiji of the Four Pillars, uh, but that was also still banking on the Rome game as well, uh, and we can get into oh. that in a few moments. That's th that that's the first leak that I wanted to bring up. I've heard of there being Fiji leaks, uh, Fiji being Ethan of the of Four Pillars fame, but <laughs> I don't know what they are. So can you tell us? Yeah, of course. Uh, the, the, it was a multiple part leak. Uh, the first was that there's going to be a Bayek sequel of some sort in Rome. Um, oh God! The, the, it, it, was, it was either going to be a direct Bayek sequel or it was going to be a, a spiritual Bayek sequel. And I think that's supposed to be made by Sophia. That obviously never happened. This is an old leak. Yeah, yeah. This was back from like early 2019. Oh, gotcha. This is when he was predicting Valhalla. Yeah. M multiple YouTubers after that came out and said that they had insider sources saying that there was in fact a Rome game in development, but it was canceled for feeling too similar to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah. Um, so we don't know if that part was true. However, there are two more parts. 
saying that there was also a game in development uh, from Ash's team at Ubisoft Montreal that was making a Viking game, and that there is also another game at Montreal being produced uh, that is going to be for next gen and be on uh, a new engine set in China. Okay. I mean, that, that, that tracks. Yeah. And I mean, they were all saying that that was going to be 2020. So obviously the year was wrong, but uh. Valhalla did happen. That was before Division 2 even launched. So that at least lends a tiny bit of credibility and obviously yeah. take the YouTubers insider sources with a grain of salt. But <laughs> one 1.5 out of 3 so far. And there's there's some concept art leaks that might show that the Chinese rumor also has some uh, validity. And let me ask you about the concept art stuff, because I know you've posted a lot about how you can sort of analyze based on... I mean, you're, you're essentially seeing some of these concept artists. They have publicly visible portfolios and... Oftentimes they have concept art for various settings that line up with having been drawn like a few years out from the game release. You're, you, I know you have some background in the world of game development. My question is, what's the likelihood, because I genuinely don't know, what is the likelihood that someone at Ubisoft could say to an artist, uh, show us what you think Assassin's Creed would look like in China? Outside the context of there being any active development on a China game. Is that possible? I would not think that that's going to happen like that. Um, there's okay. a good chance that uh, during pre-development. So I don't know the full workflow of Ubisoft Studios. I don't know uh, if, they're, if they're still using Waterfall or Kanban or, or Agile development structures. During pre-development, uh, the director or... or other people in charge might say to a group of concept artists, hey, we want to explore this country or this period. Can you give us some concept arts on these specific things and work from there? They probably have a good idea already going into that, what setting they want to do. And that's probably going to be largely based on market research. So a number of years ago, Ubisoft was really heavy into surveys. And more recently, they've been pushing a lot into uh, direct user feedback by using multiple user feedback companies, one of which was in the San Francisco Bay Area, we know from a few leaks. So the really weird part about it is the fact that those concept arts got released at all. Because generally, if a game is in development, you're not really supposed to say that you're working on it until it's at least announced, if not released. That's obviously going to differ by NDAs and what company you're with. My NDA is a little bit on the stricter side, but I know other NDAs can be a little bit looser. But we know from Valhalla that this has happened, and they confirmed that those of uh, Ragnarok concept art pieces from a Ubisoft employee were in fact actual concept art pieces for Valhalla when they were discussing potential name changes and settings. So early on in development, probably like late 2016, early 2017. So there's a pretty good precedent for us being able to find this concept art and go, that's cool. And then years later, a game shows up that's attached to it. Right. And then soon after that, we, we got those China concept arts that were also from an actively employed Ubisoft developer. Again, it, it started out saying that this is a, a fan piece, but it has the exact same naming convention used as the other concept art pieces. Naming conventions are extremely important, especially within the context of Assassin's Creed, uh, because Jade Raymond, back on Assassin's Creed 1, really put forth a huge uh, structure within Ubisoft and for Assassin's Creed to p specifically name stuff for the project being worked on. And that naming convention is what's still being used, uh, according to these concept art leaks. Interesting. Yeah. And that was because they planned from Assassin's Creed 1 to be able to reuse those assets moving forward. And that way they'd be able to easily track all assets for every game. Go Jade Raymond. Yeah. Hope she ends up. I, I feel bad for her. Her game studio just got closed, I think. Yeah. I miss Jade Raymond so much. I miss Jade. Bring back Jade. Ubisoft, get Jade on the phone. <laughs> Jade Raymond is the savior we need for Assassin's Creed after the fall of Darby. <laughs>
<laughs> Do you think she'd even want to come back? No, definitely not. Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> she'd be like, oh, Assassin's Creed, whack. That is so 2007 of my career. <laughs> She should make like a Star Wars game or something. Wasn't that supposed well, to happen? Well, she was at some supposed point? to be doing the EA equivalent of Assassin's Creed before she went to Stadia. So yeah. I don't know if that is even alive at all, if any, if if even a little bit, but So all right. From what you're saying, if you take the Fiji leak in tandem with the concept art, the 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 picture that's being painted is that China is imminently on the horizon as a next gen assassin's creed title on a new engine is that about right yeah that's exactly what i've been saying for a little while now yeah yeah and it makes sense too because eve uh has also said he really wants to tap into the chinese market so it makes yeah. sense that they'd want to start pushing the chinese or eastern asian influence games soon uh but as far as i know no assassin's creed has yet shipped in china um other than uh the new manhwa that was uh, just started being released within the past few months. But like, who in China is gonna buy a manga for a video game they've never played? Yeah, that I I I I'm a little <laughs> bit worried about going into the socioeconomics of uh, China. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to. Yeah. So, all right, we've got China. Where does this whole thing about medieval Europe come into play? So there's been a good number of rumors about that. I've been speculating for a little over a year, maybe even two years now, that the next game is going to be during the Black Plague or the Hundred Years War. So those surveys that I mentioned a little bit ago, there there are about five of them between like 2010 and 2015. There's like one every year. The one from 2015, like right before Origins, or right after Origins launch, so 2017 actually, uh, it includes the settings of the Viking invasions and their great army, uh, the conquest of Alexander the Great, uh, the Peloponnesian War between Athens and Sparta and classical Greece, and the one that I'm most interested in is the Joan of Arc's battles and rise of the Black Death during the Hundred Years' War. And the reason I've been thinking so much about the Hundred Years' War, or, or the, the Black Death, is that Joan of Arc fought towards the tail end of the war, and uh, that was really encapsula- encapsulated in the book uh, Heresy, which launched around 2016 to 2017 as well. Yuck. We, we have some opinions Yuck. about heresy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so far, they, the, the game teams likes to, uh, they, they like to take settings that don't have too much lore, attached to them so far, which makes yes. it a little bit easier for them uh, so that they don't have as many retcons as they normally do. <laughs> and as a result, the Black Death, which ravaged Europe from about 1345 to 1350, would neatly fit into that time period as well. So I have to, to tell you, Noah, that that for, for most of, and Tim, I don't want to mischaracterize any of your sentiments here, but... We've often thought that you're wrong about this. <laughs> we, <laughs> we've talked about, I mean, we've read your posts and stuff and we've all, we've all talked and like, I don't know, uh, Tim, how do you feel about the whole idea of like a black plague game, perhaps next year, recycling Valhalla's assets? Oh, I mean, you and I have very, I guess, very, very similar opinions. I'm just like, I and you, me and Lawson, <laughs> well, we, the both the, of us, the, 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 hook, the hook and, and the, the blade. blade, we, <laughs> <laughs> Let me just start over. So pretty much, <laughs> I feel like if they were to do like a fourth kind of iteration onto this Origins Odyssey Valhalla formula, that that would be very unprecedented for what we've seen for how long the kind of like half-life for for these engines and systems last in these games. It seems like it begs the question of how we define and characterize Valhalla is quite similar to Origins and Odyssey, but it's also a lot more different, you know, from Odyssey than say Odyssey was from Origins. Certainly the same base systems are there, sure. but it did feel like Valhalla was taking but those systems and it's about as different as Revelations is to AC one. Like it's the same it's it's still the yeah. same skeleton. But it's Revelations is plays you could say it plays almost completely differently, although it's the same bones. 
So I, I, I think, right. I, I, so even by revelations, you know, I, I feel like that engine was dragging them. So that's, so yeah, the AC2 engine. So while Valhalla is, is different, is, is pretty different from Odyssey. It's, it's still very much in that same, like utilizing a lot of the same assets and whatnot. From from, right. from what I know, so from it what feels I know. It, yeah, it, it feels to me like like at some point I think Ubisoft got spooked about the whole idea of iterating on a particular format like even three times, and that's why partially we never got you know a third game on the Unity engine or um, potentially this whole idea of a Rome game. I mean, can you imagine like if if the Rome game really happened and we got that and then Valhalla? Is there any way that they're doing a fifth game after that in Black Plague France? Like, I I would sure hope not, right? Because it would just be so much of the same formula being so clearly recycled. So, like, what I'm wondering is, is Ubisoft really so keen on being able to recycle the assets of their various games that they would risk the kind of, like, fatigue of having this formula repeat again? A fourth time, which wouldn't have happened in probably, I mean, unless you consider like AC1 in the same vein as two Brotherhood of Revelations, which I personally don't. I feel like AC2 and 1 are pretty different. I I don't know if they're technically different engines. I know in AC1 they called the engine Scimitar, and by AC2 they were calling it Anvil. They are different engines. Uh, Scimitar is different from Anvil. Scimitar is basically like the parent of Anvil. And then Anvil yeah. is what was used going forward. Uh, Anvil was used between uh, AC2 and Revelations, at which point they made Anvil next for AC3 through Rogue. And then Unity, every game since Unity has been on the same engine, Anvil next 2.0. Uh, right. So we're still using Unity's engine. The, the game systems itself uh, and how they interact, they don't necessarily need a new engine you know, right. to, to make a substantially different game. Yeah. Which is a common thing I've been seeing a lot where people say we need a new engine, but that's not necessarily actually going to change anything within the game's uh, systems that we're seeing. Right. Because like Rainbow Six Siege and Steep also run on Anvil Next 2.0, you know? Well, so Noah, let me ask you this. So you think if, if there is a Black Plague game that follows Valhalla, my issue isn't just that it's gonna it, it would potentially use the same engine. Do you think if they were to follow Valhalla with a Black Play game that it would actually be as different as you're saying, like Unity to Origins comparison of different assets? Well, well, no, no, no. The, the the point, the game systems itself are assets, uh, but traditionally assets is used to refer to art uh, rather than code. Yeah. Um, okay. So the art of Assassin's Creed Valhalla is mostly new there are some regurgitated assets uh that we could see from like weapons and stuff uh which isn't too uncommon but the environment is almost completely new assets they use completely new shaders and they had to make an entirely new system within the engine for rendering due to the new consoles that we have and as a result they have a lot of new environmental assets that's very expensive to make and ex- is exactly why we've had so many games that reuse those assets. You know, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and Revelations both use assets from 2, and they look very different because they just did a couple uh, texture swaps, basically. But if you look, right. they are the exact same models uh, in a lot <laughs> of the environment. So will we definitely get a game... If, if, if my speculation is right, that we're going to get a uh, game... The rec- in, in, in Northern Europe that recycles the assets of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, will it definitely be like Origins or will it be more like Unity? I can't say because there are rumors saying both ways and I could see Ubisoft wanting to actually change it up. Uh, and it also right. depends on the budget of the game and sure. you know the, the core design philosophies within that. Right. But they can substantially change gameplay systems and what they want to do for the game while still retaining all those assets, like Rogue did. So they could still do a lot of stuff uh, reusing those assets and making a few new ones themselves. So let me ask you this, because here's part of the whole rumor that I that I found interesting. Now, we've talked about, like, you know, that, that Black Plague 
you know, Europe is it's represented on the survey, so it's a possibility there. It's you know, it would be a logical asset flip from Valhalla. But a lot of the rumors, they get a little bit more specific than that. Usually when I've seen rumors about Black Plague, it's accompanied by the idea that it would come early 2022, like in spring, so which would be a big, you know, that would be kind of a change for the franchise. And that it's developed by Ubisoft Sophia, the same team. Well, maybe not team, but at least the same developer that made Rogue back in the day. But But also... In the rumor that I saw that had that information, and maybe you can just you can comment on like, oh, it's a plausible setting, but this rumor might not be as plausible specifically. But one of the things that was associated with it is this idea that they would refresh the parkour and the stealth. And that seemed unlikely to me. I I was thinking, like, if this is a game that was presumably made over the course of like a year that would have been developed by one of their smaller studios that would be similar to Rogue. Like Rogue, in comparison to Black Flag, not that different. The gameplay and design philosophy, there are there are slight iterations, as you say, but it is largely like if you released Rogue as a DLC for Black Flag, I don't think anyone would have blinked at it. But changing the parkour and the stealth, that's a big change. So how plausible is that? If Sophia makes a Black Plague game next year, how likely is it that they're actually making the kind of structural changes where they could overhaul a parkour system that's been same for the last three games? I don't think it's too unlikely. I mean, first of all, we have to ask how long has the game actually been in development? Because Valhalla was in development for three years. And just because Sophia worked on that doesn't mean they worked on it for the full three years. They could have yeah. uh, jumped off Valhalla a year ago and, and start production on... Uh, or full production on uh, Black Plague or whatever it's going to be, Champions or King Richard, you know. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if the rumor, there, there, there's been a couple of those Black Plague and Hundred Years War rumors uh, saying you know, they're going to revamp stealth and there's going to be it's going to be dark and have gothic architecture and they're going to have big castle sieges. I mean, that makes sense because, you know, yeah. cities were a little bit denser by that period. You know, there were actual historical castles and larger sieges uh, by that period. It makes sense that they could really fall into that uh, medieval knights uh, stereotype and, and, and really go full force into that. So the, it makes sense to an extent. Whether or not they have time for that, I mean, it's, it's debatable because they, they could uh, really overhaul those systems. Not that they really even need to overhaul the parkour system that much it's 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 fairly similar to uh unity and syndicate the issue is that they have reduced some mild functionality of that which can be brought back if they really wanted to and based on what you've told us about kind of the way they look at assets in these contexts uh one question i have is just because again like i do kind of feel like I wouldn't expect Ubisoft to keep going down a particular path of design philosophy for as many as four games in a row, in in this case, two over the course of about five or six years. Do you think it's even like, like what percentage of likelihood would you give it that Ubisoft does say, all right, those Valhalla assets were great, but they're, they're on to different things now because we're making a China game next. I would say like, 5% 5% possibility of that happening at this point. Really? A 5%? Yeah, I, I'm, very, 5%. I'm very confident that the next game will be releasing most likely in this fiscal year, and it's going to be reusing art assets, especially environmental art assets, from Valhalla. Wow. I, I, I don't know about the actual game systems, how much they're going to reuse right. that. Because there has been a backlash on you know Reddit and YouTube and all forms of social media about the current game systems and how people are starting to actually get tired of those. To be honest, I don't know if they're even going to, you know, go forward with a plague based game. The core is that they're definitely going to be using the Valhalla environmental assets for the next game. And I am like almost certain about that because it is so monumentally expensive. Like it, it, it costs tens of millions of dollars to make these games. Um, I think Assassin's Creed 3, which is the last one that we know about, costs like $50 million. Um, And the games are only getting bigger. And they're only getting more expensive to develop overall. And that's why uh, microtransactions 
and DLC are so prominent because that's how they make back most of their money because it's a $60 game, yeah. but they're not getting $60 per purchase. They're getting closer to about $30 per purchase. So to make back right. $60 million, you don't need to sell, you know, 1 million units. In a, you need to sell like 2 million units just to get back to the cost of development. And that's not including the cost of marketing, which can sometimes cost double. Yeah. So if we're talking about like arguments against, say, a Black Plague or Medieval Europe game, the other thing, too, that commonly is mentioned and that I think about a lot is that we're going into Paris in one of these DLCs within the year for Valhalla. How likely is it that, you know, OK, if they do include I mean, we know they're doing Paris in the DLC, but like if they do Black Plague France even as a next main game, like do they just copy and paste Paris? <laughs> is that feasible? Is that likely no it's it's not due to changes in architecture paris in 885 yeah 885 was radically different to paris in uh 1345 but even if they don't copy and paste it isn't there going to be something kind of weird about not just getting the same city you know that we've already had which happens occasionally but is kind of rare but getting the same city represented in assassin's creed Potentially, if the spring 2022 rumor is true, not just within the same year, but maybe within the same six months. I mean, there there could be a little bit of strangeness with that. I don't think it's impossible okay. for them to do that. It, it is going to be a radically different city. And if they do a game set in France as a whole during the Hundred Years' War or, or just a large portion of France and maybe a little bit of the uh, Holy Roman Empire, there's still a lot more France that they can focus on, like Orleans and Bordeaux uh, and Calais and uh, Poitiers, that they can really focus more of the marketing on. And then also be like, hey, look, we have a different version of Notre Dame here. And we have a radically different version of Paris than what you saw in uh, Unity or Valhalla. All right. So what we have so far is it seems likely that, you know, we get... At least something that flips Valhalla's assets, potentially, you know, spring of 2022, made by Ubisoft Sophia. What's your what's your likelihood rating for that rumor as a whole? So including the idea that it's that that date, that developer, that setting time period. And the idea, I think, was also floated that it would be a smaller $40 game as opposed to a full $60 release. That rumor actually stated there was Ubisoft Toronto that was making it, not Sophia. That the that that's a big one that said it was going to be the Hundred Years' War, uh, or or and Black Plague, uh, in France and Germany, uh, and it was being developed by Toronto, not Sophia. Uh, it was the okay. YouTuber, uh, Jonathan, that then said it was Sophia, not Toronto, but it was correct about twenty twenty two, and I think twenty twenty two is the really strange part because he he's made a few hints about what the next game could be. I have mixed feelings about that, but that's strange for Assassin's Creed. I'll, I'll definitely agree uh, that it, with what you said earlier, it, 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 it's really weird for Assassin's Creed to not launch as a big holiday release. In fact, that may be the only way that it lines up with if it were going to be a smaller release, doing it in spring might make more sense if it was going to be a $40 game. Yeah, and there, there's also some rumors that it was... Uh, delayed due to COVID, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, we, we've we seen a lot of games delayed due to COVID now. Like it would have been like holiday release for this year, 2021, but it got pushed back to spring? Yeah, so like, I mean, Valhalla had some issues due to COVID. They, they cut Ireland and they're uh, putting that as DLC now due to issues with COVID. It was supposed to be in the main game? Yeah, yeah. Ireland was initially supposed to be in the main game, according to Dark. Did you know that, Ross? lesson? No. Nope. What the fuck? <laughs> another <laughs> another fucking area to go conquer? Fuck that garbage. Yeah. So that's actually why I think the uh, most recent leak called Champions could actually be accurate. Uh, because that's saying that it's going to be Half Dan's return to Ireland and his death. And then you ally with the king of Dublin and kill the druids that killed him. And I could see that being really close to what happens. Since Darby more or less said that the the arc was going to be 
uh, going to w- with Half Dan to Ireland, and he dies there. There, there could be some credence credence to it. Uh, just, just take it with a massive grain of salt because there's so many other ways they could have figured that out or got that information. That said, I know that some people have been saying that it's going to be next gen only or speculating it's going to be next gen only. I do believe the next game will be cross gen, just because next gen only is not feasible uh, at any consideration at this point for an Assassin's Creed game. Why do you think that is? So Assassin's Creed Unity, actually, let me go back to Black Flag. Black Flag had a 50% adoption rate in 2013 at 4 million units sold, um, which is phenomenal. However, um, we have fairly low units sold across the board right now for both the PS5 and Xbox Series X, just due to you know scalpers and manufacturing issues due to COVID. Right. So we already have a lower market base, and Black Flag was you know a cross-gen release. Then the next year they really released Unity as next gen only. That only sold seven million units, but and they always need to get to about ten million units, and that's why they made Rogue, and that made the extra two to three million units sold to get to that ten million units that they needed per year. Uh, so that's how they hit their sales figures, and people did not like that at all. So I don't think they're ever going to do two games in one year again, yeah. or at least two games in one fiscal year, I should say. Okay. And as a result, due to the low population on the next generation, it would not be financially responsible for them to release uh, next gen only. They're, they, they, they'd never go for it money-wise. They just would not be able to make that money back. Noah, I wanted to ask you about like engine stuff just really quickly, just before we got too far away from the, the topic of the engine stuff. It would seem that this last, like, what is it? Uh, Unity Syndicate. Hold on, I'm terrible with, with math. I'm sorry. Uh, Unity Syndicate, then Origins out <laughs> five of five games, games on, on one engine. Yeah. So I have a two pronged question. First would be what necessitated these games to switch engines seemingly in that pattern before? And the second part of the question would be why is it that we have Unity to, to Valhalla with the same engine? And so how long could that last until we start seeing, like, uh, I suppose, like, until the players start noticing? Because I don't feel like it's inherently noticeable that Unity and Valhalla are the same engine necessarily, just because everything is so different, obviously. So the second part of my question is, how long could that last until they absolutely have to do it? I will say, though, just real quick, I think next gen will necessitate a newer engine sooner rather than later, just because... Sure. It would allow them to take more advantage of next gen console hardware and get more graphical fidelity and, and processing but, power out. So of but them. it's like Yeah, I agree. Could they have done AC three without switching engines is a thing. Because AC three is, is mechanically and gameplay wise very different from AC Revelations. So what necessitated a new engine for that, you know? So the big things that made them do new engines is how they want to grab basically the power of the consoles and use that within their games. And that meant primarily AI and and, and civilians in the crowd. That's a big thing that really made them do new engines. Uh, For AC2, they they want to have larger crowds, more dynamic crowds than AC1. So you could actually blend with pretty much anyone rather than just one group of monks uh, that were walking around. And then AC3... Uh, the thing that they wanted to do was really show off how big the American Revolution was. Uh, they they wanted to have uh, those fields of 10,000 men, you know, firing with cannons and explosions everywhere. They wanted to show that off as like a huge set piece. And they could only get that many people on screen if they made a new engine that could actually process that much on screen at once. Because uh, the prior engine wasn't able to draw the power necessary to actually manage all of that essentially and that's why they also upgraded to unity because once again they want to have those those large crowds because before they could only have crowds about a hundred people on screen at once they want to upgrade that to about a thousand people now to show how dense unity's paris was and, and to make those crowds really dynamic and actually react to people ultimately the the graphical intensity and computational intensity of unity just killed the performance, which is why we didn't see anything else's generation that was on Unity's level. Yeah. 
but that's why they made that new engine. And they basically pushed the engine and the current hardware to its limits uh, within the first game that they made on it. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I think we're going to get in a new engine with the China game. I think that's super likely. And then they'll have 10,000 people on screen. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so something right. stupid like that is what they're going to be doing for sure. It does seem, though, like that while the engine itself may not necessarily mean, you know, new assets or, or new gameplay systems, it, it does seem like until recently in the series, that has been the pattern is like every few games, new engine and new gameplay. So it's I guess it's it, it seems unprecedented that we've had five games on one engine and that has changed gameplay a lot among those five games. But it definitely, it speaks to, you know, the flexibility of these engines. I mean, obviously as Noah pointed out, like if you can take the same engine and make AC unity and rainbow six and steep (laughs) and every other Ubisoft game, like that's obviously pretty flexible software. Also, because when you look at the pattern, as you point out, Tim, in the series history, like it up until origins, the new design philosophy always corresponded with the new engines with origins that basically stopped being true. They were able to completely change the design philosophy and make an entirely different type of game, just as different from unity and syndicate as like AC three was to its predecessors. So I wonder how much mileage they'll get out of like an anvil 3.0. Like let's say they make the China game, they could maybe use it for like ten right. years. Yeah. yeah, that that's exactly what I expect. Is that the entire next generation of games is going to be on Anvil Next three point Yeah. In regards to the current engine, so one thing that I think does confuse a lot of people is that during Origins lead up, they said that they made an entirely new combat engine, and a lot of people were like, "Oh, so that means it's a new engine." That more means that there's a collection of scripts and software that they made that handles the combat, basically. And they're using that to handle the combat rather than the previous collection of software (laughs) and scripts that they made to handle the combat. Because instead of being animation uh, paired now, now it's hitbox-based. And it took them about two years alone just to make a good hitbox-based system for Origins. Quote-unquote good. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I I enjoyed Origins uh, combat uh, for what it was. It was functional. Yeah, I, I have issues with every combat system in Assassin's Creed, but for the most part, yeah. I, I also... Except for the first game, right? Uh, you know, I was never able to get combos right, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I, I hated combos in Assassin's Creed 1, especially for that one achievement that made you get like 50 <laughs> combos. I I absolutely hated that. Well, we'll, we'll have to hook you up with Jacers. He, he knows how to do combos in that game. Like no <laughs> He'll else. tell you everything. <laughs> He'll tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> there's I think there's good and bad to pretty much every combat system though. Uh some are yeah. better than others. I I I really hate Odyssey's combat system. Ooh. As a result, I'm really not a fan of Valhalla's. Um but but I don't see massive changes coming again for whatever game comes next, uh unless it's a Chinese game, you know, on a new engine. Uh because whatever game comes next, there's probably not gonna be enough time to make a whole new combat system. Is there any leak or rumor that you feel like is even in the same ballpark of likelihood as the idea of uh, there being a 2022 uh, medieval Europe game? Anything that feels like, oh, that also feels possible. Yeah, there's there's one that I discuss from from Jonathan. The, the others like Persia, AC Warrior being in Japan, AC Spirits in Morocco, uh, that that's all. Oh, and India is obviously all just fake. You know? They're all it's, lies. it's just people guessing. Um, <laughs> in fact, the guy who who made the 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 spirits leak on uh, Reddit came out directly and said this was a joke. <laughs> so it's it's obvious that I think all of those are just completely false. They don't make sense within <laughs> the surveys. They don't make sense uh, within asset reuse. U- reuse. They don't make sense for uh, Ubisoft's plan going forward. Uh, from what we can see. And also, I, I just wanted to say as well, this could all change by the time this episode releases because Ubisoft is having a, a financial call the day this episode launches. What? So, like, 
we, we, we could find out everything that we've talked about is just completely <laughs> oh, wrong. Oh, great. Oh, that'll be amazing. That'll be super <laughs> radical, dude. Yeah. You know what we're going to um, do? Here's what we're going to do. At the end of the this recording, <laughs> we're going to record an alternate intro. <laughs> 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 we're going to say, hey, the, today there was a Ubisoft investor call, uh, except we recorded this two days ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> so so everything we said is a lie on on list of like probability in for, you Noah, uh, like the ones that you were just speaking of are, are at the at the bottom. And then King Richard champions and Black Plague are higher. Yeah. So those are all pretty much tied. They've all got stuff in them that seems unlikely, and they've all got stuff that seems likely. Okay. Um, Champions is currently my highest. So the King Richard I'll talk about first. I just want to say, uh, because this amuses me, I was looking at the spirit leak you were talking about, and yeah, uh, this was an edit that that they added to the post. Hey, everyone, this post is fake. I typed this up to make a point to everyone that is so easy to just bullshit a supposed leak. I think we all need to get a grip and stop pointlessly speculating and instead enjoy what we have right now. Hope I haven't offended anyone with this post. It was fun making something up, so I hope any of you enjoyed the read. None of us were fooled. (laughs) Yeah, it's not like this post has hundreds of upvotes. Everyone commented that this is fake. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. What point did you make? It's so easy to make up a lie and have everyone think it's a lie. I was trying to make a point, guys. I'm just, this is a social experiment, everybody. Yeah. Of course, anyone could come up with the idea, like, of a of a, an Assassin's Creed leak, but the idea of these other ones is that people actually, uh, they're gaining traction. People think that might happen. No offense to yeah. Mr. Underscore Z underscore Ball, okay? <laughs> I'm a mod. I'm, I'm a respectful person. I'm not making fun of you right now. So, what is most unlikely to you about King Richard and champions like uh, the two of those, like what is most unlikely about those for you? So King, King Richard itself seems unlikely to me. So, so Jonathan said it's going to come in 2022. He's shown pictures of Altair and King Richard and said, it's not a remake. Hmm. I'm, I, let, let me preface that saying it's early 2022 and not a remake of Assassin's Creed one. So that's implying that there's going to be a new game. Centered around King Richard and possibly Altair, um, which most people are speculating to be his return to England, which is when he was arrested in Austria for the he 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 paid for uh, the assassins to kill his cousin uh, Conrad of Montferrat, uh, William's son, uh, so that his other cousin Guy of Lison could become the new king of Jerusalem, despite the fact that the Crusaders did not own Jerusalem. <laughs> so as a result, he was arrested by the Holy Roman Empire to help out uh, the Frankish king because they were all allies. And then while he was arrested, France took back uh, its territory in Bordeaux and Normandy, which he then spent the rest of his life fighting to get back for England. So France and Germany make sense as a set in especially within the context of King Richard. The issue, though, is that King Richard and po- post-Third Crusade, I don't feel like he's the most known-about person. You know, people don't really know that King Richard was arrested for having uh, one of his cousins assassinated and then uh, he fought for the rest of his life in France uh, to regain English territory in France. That's, that's not something people really know about, I feel like. That sort of goes back to the surveys because all those surveys and user research that Ubisoft does is to make sure that the games they're making can be easily marketed and sold to people. And I think that the Hundred Years' War, whether or not it's in the Black Plague, the Hundred Years' War is a far more marketable setting than King Richard. And that's my biggest hang-up about that entire leak because John Jonathan has gotten stuff right before. But he's also gotten stuff wrong. He he was a person who who pushed forward the uh, rumor that Eivor's name was going to be Jorah. Ended up being true in the sense that that was originally the name. Yeah, that was one of the first names that they came up with. And then they used that name in the Vinland Ark yeah. for Eivor. So it was partially true. 
But that also was outdated info by that point. Right. So could Ubisoft Sophia have been looking into making a game about King Richard? Yeah, I think that's very likely. Are they still making a game about King Richard? That's that's what I'm, I, I, I think is, is where I'm on that. Because I think that there is truth to that. But then they just had to do a design pivot based on what's going to be more popular according to the producers and settings research that they've already done. Which then goes into Champions... That leak is saying, you know, it tells us what's going to happen in DLC. So, spoiler alert, potentially. <laughs> Half Dan dies, and uh, Eivor uh, allies with Odo and Rolo uh, during the Siege of Paris to do something. <laughs> and that's a little bit strange. That, that That's one of my hang ups there because Odo was very against the Vikings, and the uh, Charles, I think the fat. Uh, his capitulation to Rollo and the Vikings is part of what got him deposed by Odo. Huh. Odo was a Count of Paris at the time. Could be that Odo plays a part in the story and therefore the leaker just assumed they were allying, uh, allying with Eivor and Rollo, but perhaps they're not. That could be that could be possible. It could be that. It could be something more like Alfred, uh, where Odo uses Eivor as a way to stop the siege, because sieges take a long time. Yeah. This was a year-long siege that the Vikings led on Paris. Um, and, and this is just the Ile de la Cite in the center of Paris, the island. You know? It was a year-long siege? Yeah, yeah, it was a year-long siege from 885 to 886. Which will be fitting for this DLC, because Valhalla is a game that takes a year to play. <laughs> exactly. So with how long the siege is, I could see Odo temporarily allying with Eivor to just stop the siege um, and or other trickery to get the Vikings out. Just because he allies with Eivor, I don't think necessarily means he's going to necessarily not still be against the Vikings. Because a lot of sieges, because of how long they lasted, it, it, it was more a method of using starvation and subter subterfuge against your opponents from within to stop the siege rather than you know, eventually you uh, build a high enough dirt ramp and burst through the wall uh, and, and just slaughter everyone inside. I mean, that happened too, but there's these longer sieges took a really long time and relied heavily on insiders to help them out. So I could really see Eivor playing that role of being an insider in Paris and, and stopping uh, something in Paris. And that's what, you know, gets the Vikings out. And then that leads into the fact that we're going to be playing as some sort of medieval champion, whether that and and playing up uh, famous medieval stories. I'm assuming it means like Robin Hood and I'm sorry, it says it's going to play into the high fantasy uh, element of oh. AC. Yeah. <laughs> what? I'm sick <laughs> yeah. to my stomach. So I, I, I think before getting too sick, there should be a discussion on what it means to be high fantasy. Because, like, there there could be, you know, dragons and bullshit uh, like that. Or uh, it could mean, like, high fantasy that inspired the modern high fantasy. Like, uh, medieval romanticism. That's charitable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Count de Monte Cristo, um, Robin Hood, uh, King Arthur. I mean... I could see them playing into that type of high fantasy with witch burnings and, and fair maidens and... Uh, knights in shining armor, besieging castles, and a knight of a round table, and uh, medieval tournaments and jousting. I could see them really playing into that. That seems very likely to you me. You know, I, as you're saying that, Noah, that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... Yeah, but uh, but but let's be honest. I know, I'm it's sorry. charitable. It, it, I know, it's, it's, it's very charitable, but like... I would like that sounds like how likely is someone saying high fantasy take to be talking about that stuff? I feel like probably not. I feel like if they're saying high fantasy, I mean, also, can I, I just say, I did they say high fantasy or do they just say fantasy? Let me check a classical European fantasy take on the series is what I see right now. Okay. Classical. Yeah. So classical fantasy could definitely mean more. Uh, medieval romanticism gotcha. than modern high fantasy like Tolkien yeah, and like no uh, no elves J.R. Martin <laughs> you know dwarves yeah. and Assassin's Creed was it wait, okay was 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 this one the champions one yeah. that was the one yeah th this is th champions that was the one that they were talking about new parkour for correct no no no, no th this one only says 
uh, the DLC. Uh, okay, I get you. Uh, w- what happened in the DLC, and then the next game is coming out in early 2022, codenamed Champions, and it's going to be a uh, classical medieval fantasy take on the series. No detail, no developer, no price, just... No price, no developer. Which actually probably, by force of sheer vagueness, makes it the most likely to be completely true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I I could really see that happening, yeah. though. I mean, that, that also fits with both The Hundred Years' War and uh, King Richard, because that that that's the time period when uh, that medieval romanticism was at its most right. uh, prevalent. So I could definitely see that actually happening. Because there were witch burnings there, there, there during the Black Plague, uh, they could play into stuff like uh, not Nostradamus. Uh, shit, what's his name? Jesus. Uh, N- Nicholas Flamel. Oh, Flamel. Um, yeah. No, Nicholas Flamel, who made the Philosopher's Stone, and he was alive during the Black Plague. If, if I remember correctly from Unity, he had an underground laboratory in Paris. Um, so they could definitely play into Nicholas Flamel experimenting with the Philosopher's Stone. Ah. You talking about this makes me want to play it. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it's already in lore, though, that Flamel was real, and he had actually made a Philosopher's Stone. Yeah. That's back from, like, uh, Memories, I think it was. Uh, and uh, the assassin Giovanni Borgia had found... Oh, hey, you're getting it. You're getting to my territory. <laughs> <laughs> w- with uh, Valhalla bringing the Isu language into the forefront again, I could see them bringing... Uh, Flamel, maybe as one of the Aesir sages or something like that, and that's how he was able to write in the Aesir language the notes about how to make a philosopher's stone. Wow. And maybe that's what caused the plague, or maybe that's, you know, how they cured the plague or something like so that. So I hope that whatever you they know? say in this investor's call that's apparently happening <laughs> today, they say, oh, and by the way, <laughs> Nicholas Flamel. <laughs> I would you know, love that. Like, here's the thing. <laughs> Noah has just single-handedly sold, like, out of all the leaks, the least one I was interested in was that one. He's just sold me on it. However, can I just say, I went from believing that there was not a chance of that happening <laughs> to now thinking it's probably going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and you know, it, it, it actually sounds not only believable, but it, it sounds like something... Uh, that Ubisoft would do and could actually be somewhat decent. It, it, it probably wouldn't be like a good Assassin's Creed game again. I, I, I'm almost sure that we won't play as an assassin because it, it's been five out of seven games you don't play as a friggin' assassin. But <laughs> um, <laughs> but I could definitely see them going that route because that's something that people have been asking for since they saw Unity's uh, you know, 100 Years War segment. And I could really see that happening. Yeah, that would be actually exactly what Tim has wanted. Yeah, it would literally be exactly what I, I ever since the Unity prologue, I've just wanted to play in that for yeah for eight, forever. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, they they give us a small title set in that, and then they take us to China. And all that- right, I'm sold. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst Noah has like sold me on this idea, I feel like. If it was just like similar Vahala like dialogue choices in like hundred hour experience, I would I would hate it. So uh, yeah, I, I I'm I, I'm yeah. of two minds on this. <laughs> yeah, I mean there's there's always a question of whether or not they'll do the setting well, right. and that's a whole other question to whether or not that setting has real promise. The the level of similarity to Valhalla is what could make or break this game because if they really do something fresh and different with it, 100%. knowing it's going to be this this sort of side game or, or smaller game holdover title. If they lean into that and they say, well, you know what? Fuck it. We can have good parkour again. We can, we can have maybe a single playable protagonist or something. But if, like you said, it's just very much in the Valhalla mold. If what we're getting is, let's say even as similar to Valhalla as Odyssey was to origins, if it's that close, the odds of it somehow being like better than Valhalla are pretty slim. Even I though agree. again, like, I don't love I don't love Valhalla. It's pretty low on my list. Did I enjoy playing it? Sure. But I mean, well, probably for at least half of the time I spent playing it, I enjoyed playing it. But yeah. Yeah. One one thing Jonathan said was it's going to be completely different to anything that we've gone before. And again, take it with a massive grain of salt. It could be correct. It could be outdated info. It could just be flat out wrong. 
and, and I've seen some articles on it saying it might be like in an Uncharted or Last of Us style game. What? Um, what? And I've I've seen some people speculating that it might be more like uh, the Tomb Raider reboot from like 2013 onwards. How? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I question the same thing. <laughs> I, I mean, AC can't go linear. That's for sure. That's not in. That's not their DNA. But I mean, maybe more set piece heavy linear mission design could come back. Yeah, more more like Revelations, or or maybe it could just be a couple of hub worlds again, more like uh, AC one and two mm. instead of just a single open. I would world. love that. That would surprise um, me. That would surprise me. But Tim would be Tim would come. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so since we've just covered a few of the more likely options, I think it would be fun to look at all of the unlikely options. And Noah, you have like a list of all of the possibilities from things that have been rumored to things that you just think historically and from a development perspective are possible. So I kind of just want you to like give us very brief one sentence descriptions of each possibility. And then for Tim and I to each have like a one sentence max response to it. I feel like that would be fun. It might not be fun. I don't know, but we should try. So there's Spanish conquest of the new world. Uh, you know, that would be Francisco Pizarro in 1530s uh, Peru or uh, Hernando Cortez in like 1520s Mexico. Cool. Probably not happening next. Yeah, no, I agree. I don't even know what Peru looks like. So. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Uh, next is China. There are a ton of settings that they could go to. I think the most likely is uh, the Yuan Dynasty during uh, the reign of Kublai Khan, who finished the conquering of uh, Sun, China, and created the largest Mongolian empire. Injected into my veins. I, I think it's fairly likely for the next generation game. Yeah, I mean, I'm at the point with like Chinese history that you could just tell me any in any era and i'd be like cool let's do it like i i just (laughs) (laughs) yeah next uh then there's persia because uh the art director rafael lacoste said it's inevitable and a lot of people want a basim prequel uh which could take place during the abbasid dynasty two things one there's no need for a basim prequel and two (laughs) Every time a Ubisoft employee at any level has an opinion about what could or should yeah. or shouldn't happen next, people treat it as gospel. Like, I think Alex Hutchinson said something about no feudal Japan a decade ago, and people have held on to that ever since as evidence they won't do it. But I don't feel like those people are the decision makers, so it doesn't really affect my opinion of how likely it is. So I think it is not happening soon. Yeah, I, I agree. It's definitely not happening anytime soon. I could just be ignorant to it, but I feel like beyond... Like the obvious, like Prince of Persia connection. Like I'm not sure what a, I'm not sure what a, like I guess events or gameplay instances that they could really market for Persia. I'd rather they do a Prince of Persia game using some Assassin's Creed design philosophy to go back to Persia, and then they can, you know, step away from the animus stuff if they want to with that, and they can, you know, do more Prince of Persia fantasy ish lore and stuff. Uh, next is the Age of the Stirlums. Um and this is just not going to happen. <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> um, Ivan the Terrible in Russia. Uh, he couldn't make a perfect temple. I'm down for that. <laughs> we had our chance for Russia after Syndicate. I wanted it so bad. But I, I really specifically only want uh, Russian Revolution. Anything before that in Russian history, I really couldn't give less of a shit about. <laughs> the next is the Holy Roman Empire, which is basically Germany. Um, there's a lot of different settings for that. Uh, Otto the first, you know, who, who started the empire or, uh, there's conspiracies where they may have faked time, um, called the phantom time conspiracy the where fuck? the what? emperor of the Holy Roman empire. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a real conspiracy. That the emperor dope. of the Holy Roman empire, uh, the Byzantine empire and the Pope conspired together to make them all rule and reign on the year 1000 AD because that was supposed to be meant to be special for like Christianity. And as a result, made up the entire early medieval period. (laughs) I love that. I do want to say though, as far as like general in general, the Holy Roman empire, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that 
I feel like Ubisoft is more likely if this Champions League is is even half accurate. I feel like they're more likely to do a France and Germany game in 2022 than they are to do a France only game in 2022. So I think HRE is coming up. Yeah, I could agree with that. Uh, next is the first Scottish War of Independence. Uh, so you remember the movie Braveheart? <laughs> Yeah, it's literally that, and I included it because Scotland isn't in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and in the game, they actually say, for the Bruce, and <laughs> the Bruce is a reference to um, Robert the Bruce, and that's what started the war uh, led by Andrew Moray and uh, uh, Mel Gibson. <laughs> 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 Mel Gibson is my favorite historical figure, dude. I want that. In the- <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say both no thank you and not happening. Sorry, Scottish people listening to this. I I, owe, I thought until very recently that Braveheart was an American Revolution movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That, that, that was Patriot. Because <laughs> I feel like I had seen like clips of it like just on television at random, and I didn't feel like Mel Gibson had an accent. Does he? Yeah, no, I, that, that, that was the movie Patriot. Mel Gibson was in a movie called The Patriot? Yeah, and that was during the American Revolution. But whenever I would see him like shirtless in Braveheart, I'd be like, yeah, kill the Redcoats. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, moving on. Uh, there's uh, go, going backwards from Valhalla, we could see Charlemagne and or Clovis. Charlemagne was... Uh, Charles the Great. Don't even know what those two things are. Uh, Charlemagne. Charlemagne is the host of the Breakfast Club <laughs> radio show. <laughs> he, he 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 started the Carolinian dynasty and the Holy Roman Empire when he was crowned uh, King of the Romans on, in 800 CE. I'm going to be real with you, Noah. I've been following this far, but nothing you just said made any sense to me. <laughs> Charlemagne Templar. <laughs> okay, thank you. I, I, I am so sick of hidden ones. If we're going to go anywhere, they need to be assassins. I hope, I, I mean, uh, that's independent of the likelihood of something, but I'm very hopeful that. I agree, but that, this, he said hidden ones, and I checked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh would would champions i forget what year it's set in would champions yeah be, yeah that would be assassins that would, that would be, be assassins, assassins definitely good yeah. good and cool because in heresy they're assassins what's next uh king arthur uh he was actually probably real and in the lore he had excalibur and there are a few references to him in valhalla isn't, isn't excalibur in valhalla it is i feel like this like valhalla being set in england they're not going to do another just England game. And if they wanted to do a King Arthur thing, it would have maybe factored more into Valhalla. So I, I, I feel like they've, they had their chance. They didn't take it. And it were probably for the better on that. But we mostly saw Eastern England in Valhalla and oh, King geez. Arthur was mostly oh, Western God. England and Wales and Scotland. Yeah. But, but what are they going to do? They're going to be like, Hey, it's England again. Fewer Vikings this <laughs> yeah. time. I don't know. Uh, well, they, they, they could have Tinta Jail Castle and uh, the, the Knights of the Round Table. Mm. And now instead of, you know, being a Viking, you're Romano Britain who's fighting the Anglo-Saxons. Yeah, nah. They, they could even reuse the same, <laughs> <laughs> same character models for the <laughs> Saxons. They could reuse dialogue. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, also, Avalon was a game that was meant to be like King Arthur period uh, that Sir canceled so fucking serg is it serg or serge i don't know i've heard serge oh jeez. <laughs> uh but i think the actual term is asshole <laughs> <laughs> hookblade says fuck you serge however your name is pronounced next is rome because there are a ton of no nope. rumors about rome no they missed their <laughs> chance they could have done it they missed yeah. it they're not gonna do it <laughs> I, I, I want ancient Rome so bad. No. Like like that 3D model we, you can find online. It would have been perfect following Odyssey. It would have been. Yeah. Just, I, I, I mean, e- even if nothing else in Italy, just like a one-to-one recreation of the city of Rome. Yeah, okay. But Noah, what would you rather have if you had to choose between them? It's the year 2018 and they're asking you. Do you want <laughs> no listen, do you want AC Rome next year and it's it's Odyssey but in Rome? Or do you want AC Valhalla? Fuck. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I never really won the Viking setting because I knew that we'd get the parkour that we wanted. 
I know, I know it's Odyssey again, <laughs> but I think I'd rather Odyssey than Valhalla. Uh, Odyssey in Rome than Valhalla, because at least I can get the setting that I really wanted more than Vikings. Gotcha. I'd vote Valhalla because I don't really care about either setting, but, and I didn't like Odyssey, but uh, Tim, what do you choose? Valhalla. Noah's been outvoted and kicked off the island. What's next? Because like uh, ancient, Ro- like, uh, never mind, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a hundred years war in Black Plague, uh, which. We know, we know what you think about that. We've already <laughs> talked about it. <laughs> I've gone from thinking it's like 40% likely to thinking it's like 70% likely. Uh, so those are all the big settings that I think could happen, or don't really think they could happen. Then there are the other leaks, uh, obviously Persia. AC Warrior, do you want to talk about uh, AC Warrior in Japan? Yeah, fuck it, let's talk about Warrior. Did that ever get onto the subreddit at all? Or did we? No. It, it got caught by Auto Moderator. No, he never reposted it. So this is a Hookblade exclusive leak, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we did talk about it a bit last time, but it is like, again, I think I said this before. It's it's the one, if I could choose out of all the rumors what game we would get next, that's the one I would pick. So it's really weird to me because they named it Assassin's Creed Warriors, all right? Yeah. But they said it during the Edo period. When the samurai were on the decline, they say it's only going to be set around Edo or modern day Tokyo. Yeah. And, and, oh, and there's going to be a massive uh, resurgence of stealth and uh, and parkour. <laughs> so why is it named Warriors? Yeah, that's a very. I mean, I also feel like the code name Champions is a little sus, to be honest. Or I think it's just Champion, but I think that's also sus. But. They don't fit the the convention of how Ubisoft typically code names or names their game because they almost never just, you know, code it a location. They almost never just like code it with the kind of character you play. Like it wasn't like there was any point where Odyssey was codenamed Assassin's Creed Mystios or they choose thematic ideas or things that reference like the time period, like golden age did, but they almost never either. I mean, people in leaks all the time, just put like the name of the country thinking that that would be a code name. It almost never is. And people put a cons like, like spirit uh, strikes me as particularly strange. I know we know that's fake now, but like champion just doesn't fit the mold of what they usually code name their games. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So Joe Raptor said that, Champion seemed likely as a name because you play as a champion based on what he knows about the next uh, game. Well, I guess that lends it a bit of credibility. It just still strikes me as odd. Yeah, I mean, the fact that he only said that it seems likely rather than, oh, yes, I know for a fact that this is true based on my own insider sources Yeah, could mean that this is still a fake leak, but just getting closer to the mark of what Jor Raptor and Jonathan have heard. Yeah. Warriors, Uh, however... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah you, you, new engine anvil next 3.0 assassin's creed warriors you, you you play as a female only protagonist named akako who grows her hair over time and can be uh customized with barbers depending on the length outfit system straight up same as Val, as valhalla and and same uh armor pieces as odyssey they're diable like in ghost of tsushima around the city are blacksmiths seamstress general stores and doctors Tree of Templars, game spans ten years. It's like it's like a, a an AC fan's wet dream, basically. Yeah, talking about improved parkour and stealth, largely city based setting, single female protagonist, fewer uh, <clears throat> fewer dialogue options, more motion capped cutscenes. It's essentially like if you took everything that people critique about these last few games and you. You you brought us back to the to the the way things were when they were good, but I, it's like too it's too good to be true, and it's very it's very detailed with which is typically a sign of of fakeness because people tend to have like fanfic type inclinations with it when they come up with these fake things and right. I mean the the real leak from 4chan uh, on Empire, which was Origins. It, it 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 was basically just said, hey, so the next game is called Empire. It's in Egypt, and it's not going to be this year. This year is, is Watch Dogs 2. Next year is going to be Egypt. Uh, it's lush as fuck. Have fun. And, yeah. like, that was it. 
They said it was beautiful and Witcher 3 inspired, you know? And it was yeah. like very broad details. Yeah, and then this is like detailing how her hair grows. And like the actual plot of the main story. Yeah, it's it's a lot of words too. You would think that anyone involved at the level to know absolutely all of those details is not in a position where leaking that information would be a good thing for them. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and that's what I said about the India leak too. Because like, if that's at Ubisoft Montreal and they, they only have a map that's made, you know, from something online, which online assets do get used in very early development sometimes. Yeah. If they only have that type of assets available, then like 15 people right now are on the project that have permissions for it. And you're going to get fired. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. Also, <laughs> I found the map really unbelievable that came out with India, not just because it looks so bad, but because if you look at the way they section off the different areas of the map, that's not how game maps ever look <laughs> like. You no. don't have a game map where you have one huge single area and then another thing that gets its own color and name on the key of the map is just these little tiny bubbles that are, you know, spread throughout that are in five different places on the map. Like, that's just very, like, it might be accurate to what was historically the division of land, but when they make a game, they give you different sized areas with some variety, but never games where you have like one huge swath of land that's all one thing and then tiny little bubbles of the one other thing. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. That's actually something that I'd love to see in a future game where if it takes place during a war, like the Peloponnesian War, um, you could actually see those fronts moving back and forth. And maybe there'd be small contingents on, on like just a single landmass over here, and then the rest of that area is being assaulted by the uh, opposing army. Yeah, like a truly systemic war system would be really cool. Any other thoughts, boys? The sound, like the way Noah and only Noah was talking about champions. I uh, I like that idea, and I hope that they do that. But if but they probably won't because it, that sounds too good of an idea. It would be too. It would be too good. Yeah. Ubisoft doesn't like making things that are good. <laughs> I I personally just cannot wait for the uh, financial report call to come out. How likely is it that we'll actually get concrete information about the future of Assassin's Creed in this call? So in the last call, they confirmed, I think, five games are going to be coming uh, for the 2021 to 2022 fiscal year. So Ubisoft's fiscal year is not January to December. It's the is April to March. Um, so we are currently in the fourth uh, quarter of Ubisoft's uh, 2020 to 2021 fiscal year. So in 2021 to 2022's fiscal year, uh, we should be getting like five games according to Ubisoft, including Far Cry uh, 6. Yeah, Far Cry 6 um, and uh, Rainbow Six Quarantine. And a lot of people are thinking that we're also going to be getting Skull and Bones this year. And probably, uh, what's it called? Beyond Good and Evil 2 is going to be 2022 to 2023. Assuming that even ever comes out. So that leaves one to two games that we're going to get this year. And they'll probably confirm again at this uh, meeting or at, at this uh, financial cause. Uh, number one, how many units or the broad estimation of units sold for major games that they've released this year because they only talk about triple a games they don't talk about double a games or if they do they don't talk about it as much games like Anno and uh riders and uh dance dance revolution or whatever the version they make is um they they don't consider those triple a releases and they generally also only release one tom clancy game a year so which is going to be quarantine so we should figure out how many games we're getting in 2021 to 2022. And they've also historically said stuff about whether or not we should expect a new Assassin's Creed title, which does not mean a remake or a remaster like Assassin's Creed 3 or uh, the Ezio Collection. Both years they said that there's not going to be any new Assassin's Creed title. Both years we still got the remaster because there's always going to be Assassin's Creed content. So is there going to be a new Assassin's Creed title? How many titles are they getting this year? What's the most likely titles to fill in the holes that they have? And Assassin's Creed is Ubisoft's bestseller. So 
nine times out of ten, if there's a hole and they haven't said there's not going to be an Assassin's Creed this year, we're getting an Assassin's Creed to fill that hole and make some profits. So if they say in this call that there will be an Assassin's Creed game in this fiscal year, that would include if it went in spring 2022. Yes, it would go from any time between April of 2021 to March of 2022. And if they say there's not an Assassin's Creed game in this fiscal year, does that mean we know that these leaks talking about spring of 2022 are probably wrong? Yes, they are. And what would you think is more likely in that scenario? That we get something like Champion in late 2022 or that we don't do that entirely and 2022 brings us to China? I don't know. Um, (laughs) See, because if we're not getting it in early 2022... My best guess is it is probably being canceled, um, okay. like the game from 2016, and uh, most likely 2019 was going to be a Rome game. So most likely those two games were canceled. I'd assume that the game that's meant to be post Valhalla was also canceled if we're not getting one this fiscal year. And I don't know what that means for China, because I've been thinking that China is going to be fiscal year uh, or, or uh, late 2023 as the release date. Because they they need to make a new engine, and there needs to be time for the actual install base of the next gen hardware. I mean, they they could always do twenty twenty two, late twenty twenty two, even if they release something in early twenty twenty two, which is the previous fiscal year. They could also just do a remaster or remake. They could just push out a, a remaster of AC one with you know trophy support for the PlayStation finally, and instead of doing the full remake like a lot of fans want, you know, including. Uh, Bloodlines and Altair's Chronicles, they could could just do a budget push out like uh, AC2 through Revelations and just say, here you go, and make their money for the year. All right, so at least with that talked about, we'll have some content for, you know, whatever this this call confirms or denies, you know, at least then they'll know how that compares to what we've talked about here, what that tells us, so. Right. Yeah, no matter what, there is content coming within the next year. How much is the question? That's a that's a good way to look at it. Noah, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your expertise on history you, and game development and Assassin's Creed. Yeah, it's been great. And thank you for listening, whoever you are that I'm talking to right now. We appreciate your support, and we would love it if you could like this video if you're listening on youtube subscribe to our youtube channel follow us on twitter at hookblade uh you can find our our good buddy noah on reddit as nstav13 and where he's part of the mod team for the assassin's creed subreddit uh by the time that this releases i will just have published my 42nd uh setting post which covers my 100th setting nice Nice. (laughs) (laughs) I, I've been the hook. And I have been the blade. And I've been the corny writing. And we will see you on the next episode. Bye. Give me one sec, let me take a drink. <laughs> Please do. Uh, go ahead. <clears throat> we don't wanna we don't wanna dry throat Noah on this podcast. <laughs> nice and lubricated for you guys. <laughs> <laughs>